With the Switch 2 on the horizon as multiple presentations were seemingly announced earlier than usual, along with the unlikelihood of a September Nintendo Direct, and along with multiple reports and rumors just keep piling from left and right, it seems this month might finally reveal the successor, if not next month, the successor to the Nintendo Switch. In this video, I'm going to be sharing what I think the, the Switch 2 needs. So, here are my top 10 plus things slash features that I want to see for the next console. Uh, just to let you know, this, this is based on my own, um, my own thoughts, based on the rumors, the speculation, and just putting, up my, putting my ideas and uh, my opinions on them, seeing if if it suits my um, my wish list or not. Um, as of today, um, September 18th, um, apparently there have been um, leaks of the Switch 2. So um, if you wanna see um, some leaks, some leaked pictures, um, go on Reddit, you'll find it. Go, go to Google, you'll find it. Um, I'm not gonna be showing you. Um, my thoughts and ideas are pre Switch 2 leaks. So just, just those ones. So just, um, yeah. I also want to mention that um, I'm going to be taking, I'm going to be taking some, ide some ideas of um, what the PlayStation has and the Xbox and also taking from previous Nintendo consoles like the Wii U and back. So first, let's talk about part one, uh, physical. So I want to talk about the first three things, um, the, the physical aspects, starting with number one, the specs. All right, the Switch 2 should no doubt just be a stronger and better Switch. An evolution, not a revolution. That means don't change the hybrid gimmick and keep the Joy-Cons. I mean, the Switch is, is, a, is a selling console you, like uh, you sh you, they shouldn't like change like um the gimmick or how it looks like and how it plays. I think what the switch had really worked and it really clicked with us. So like don't change that. Also, Nintendo doesn't want a Wii U scenario, right? Right. <laughs> um. Also, don't expect this console to be as powerful as the current competing. Uh, competing consoles such as the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S. X, sorry. Oh, by the way, I'm reading from notes, so just like just letting you know. Um, yeah. Um, so for the resolution, um, let's see. When you're playing handheld, it's um 720p. I think it's 780p. Um, handheld and 1080p docked on the TV. So I think what should be for the next switch is like um 1080p handheld and 1440p uh, when you're when docked. And with the extra power in the dock, it can enhance that to 4K. Yes. You can play your games on docked while playing on your TV using 4K resolution. Sounds cool, right? So um, yeah, to support stronger first party titles and especially third party titles, because I believe that um, the, the Switch 2 will have a stronger um, lineup of third party games. Like um, currently in this age, people like own um, a 4K TV. So it's perfect at this time and age. So why not? Or people are considering upgrading to a 4K TV. As for the power, the power should match um, the Xbox One and the, and the PlayStation 4, um, but not the PS5 or the Xbox Series X. And speaking of 4K, that can be um, boosted using, um, that can be supported by using DLSS upscaling. So if you guys don't know, the DLSS upscaling is for, um, you know, to increase uh, frame generations, add more pixels, thus, you know, um, really upscaling to 4K. Um, the resolution could even rival the PS4 Pro 
and the Xbox Series S, not X, but S. And of course, it's gonna like greatly um enhance the Switch One games that need it. Bayonetta, Pokemon, you name it. And of course, ray tracing. I would love to play Minecraft on my Switch. That that also gives me the option to have um RTX. Um instead of just playing on the Xbox or what else? Um um taking some um attributes from the OLED model. Um it'll the screen will be an L C D instead of an OLED screen. Um I would love to see an OLED screen for the next console, but um I believe due to cost, they would probably want to like keep it as an L C D. Of course the big of course um the console will be bigger in size. That means a bigger screen. Um the OLED had a seven inch um size screen. So I'm counting on the um, the Switch 2 to have it have at least um an eight inch or higher inch screen. Of course, um longer battery duration, improved speakers, a better dock that doesn't doesn't scratch your uh, screen or your console. Um I had that problem with my with my console, just trying to slide it in and out, in and out, but um I get these little mini scratches and I don't like that. Hopefully they have like these um these soft um rubber dampeners that don't like scratch your console when you're when you're like docking your console. What what else? Um increase the RAM, increase the storage, more than the Switch one, right? Oh, and get this. Colored buttons. There's gonna be colored buttons on your controllers. Just like the the Super Nintendo Entertainment System or the Famicom if you want to call it that. Or the new Nintendo 3DS. Yeah, they had colored buttons. Or if they want to go like... Those buttons were like... The colors were in the letters. But um, if you want to get really colorful, you can like... Um, make them as colorful like uh, the, the 64 controllers. Or the Game controllers. But I think they're going to stick to the former. Um, and of course, a built-in wire LAN port. So you have that stable internet connection when you're playing online. Because... Uh, that will drive you crazy if you're an online player and your and your internet connection is unstable. I've been there. And lastly, the cartridge will be akin to like um the 3DS. Um the DS had like you can compare the Switch cartridge to um the DS cartridge. But for the Switch 2, um their cartridges will be akin to the 3DS. See, they had that little notch um, on like in the upper like right corner of the cartridge of the game cards. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that their game cards are going to look like that. They had that little uh, notch, like, so you won't put the Switch 2 game card on a Switch 1 console. Also, um, speaking of um, game cards, um, that leads me to number two. Backwards compatibility. So like the Wii, the Wii U, the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance, the DS, and the 3DS, the next console should no doubt have backwards compatibility. If the Switch 2 is just another Switch, but better, then it makes total sense. And Nintendo will be morons if they don't include it. Right? Right. Sorry, Nintendo, you, you gotta add backwards compatibility. Like you can play your Switch game, you can play your Switch games from the regular Switch onto the Switch 2. Like physical and digital. Let, 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 let's be honest. Like the Switch has a great library of games, starting from Breath of the Wild to Super Mario Odyssey to Splatoon to Smash Brothers to Animal Crossing: New Horizons. The list goes on. Like seven years worth of games. And um, you're probably thinking, like, yeah, if it's not backwards compatibility, then, you know, um, how should I say this? Like, my Switch right now is in its last, last legs. I'm afraid of how long my, my uh, Switch will last. So, like, if I can't, if my Switch breaks down and I can't, and I can't use my games on my Switch 2, then that's a problem. That's a big problem. So yeah, make sure the Switch 1 games work for the Switch 2. 
And of course, you can transfer the save data. Like, so you can continue right where you left off from your old Switch to the new successor. Uh, you can also use the same, Nintendo the same Nintendo accounts as you did with the Switch 1, meaning there's no need, there's no need to make a new account. So I think that's what they meant. Uh, I don't know if it was Doug Bowser or Shuntaro Furukawa, one of the, pres the presidents um, of Nintendo. Um, they were talking about like a, tra a transitioning between your, your Switch and the next console. Like they want to, they want to have a smooth transition, so you're not like starting all over again. And it's not just the games are going to be backwards compatible. Your Joy Cons will be compat, will be backwards compatible too, but they won't physically connect to the Switch Two. Um, your old Joy Cons on the Switch One will connect, can connect to the Switch Two via Bluetooth. Also. I think that's why Nintendo was planning to release a Joy-Con charging stand um, later in October. So yeah, that kind of supports the theory that you're going to be using that charging stand for your Switch 2. So if you want to like use like your other controllers, well, you know, if you're at a party and using your 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 Switch 2 your, your Switch 2 Joy-Cons, you can like you know put these guys, put, give them a charge, and just connect them via Bluetooth to your Switch, and then boom, you're, you're playing. Um, a lot with backwards compatibility comes along with graphical enhancements. Um, I guess that'll be due to the, um, the 4K resolution, the DLSS upscaling, whatever you call it for your Switch One games. It's gonna boost your perform. It's gonna boost the performance and the visuals for the games that can benefit. Um, like I said before, um, I guess games that can use it are like uh, Bayonetta Three and uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Oh yeah, uh, going back to the Joy-Cons, that, that leads me to um, number three. The Joy-Cons. Or, the, yeah, and other controllers. Like I, said, like I said before about keeping the Joy-Cons, what can they add and improve to these controllers? And also, this goes along with the Pro Controller too. Of course, at the console, the Joy-Cons will be much larger in size, more comfortable in your hands. I remember the first time I held, I held the Joy Cons in my hands for the first time, and they felt and they feel really, really small. Like, look at these guys; they're very cute. Like, um, yeah, very small in my hands. Like, very small buttons, especially like the the SL and the SR buttons. Very small. So if you can like increase the size a bit, I guess that'll be much um better in your hands, more comfortable, and more better to play. And yeah, it's just go big, right? Especially with the Joy Cons. Um, oh, and the best part: there are no, there's no drift, no Joy Con drift. This has been a major and long-standing issue for seven years, as long as I had the Switch, and as as far as I heard, um, you're, you're playing, you're playing a game like Breath of the Wild and um, say you're at that part where you're like trying to like cross to the other side but you get to like cut the tree and make a log to get to the other side. What if instead of just tight roping, the Joy-Con drift leans you to the left and you fall to your death? Does that sound funny? A little bit, but it's not funny. Like you guys probably know that you got, you guys probably know that you guys are good gamers. so. To have that ruin the experience, it's a big turnoff for people that want to buy the Switch. And, you know, it just sucks. So, yeah, I'm really hoping that Nintendo really finds a solution and really fixes this problem. This is, ins this is like massive copium right now. Copium right now. Um, and it's really hard to play games, especially for handheld. That's why I play um, on my TV, like Doc, because my Pro Controller... It has no drift, so I'm like, it's not gonna like ruin the performance or my or my play. Like when I play handheld, I'm using the Joy Cons, and the Joy Cons have the Joy Con drift on my left, on my left um, control stick, and it just ruins the experience. So, and if you want to like um, fix your Joy Cons, you have to like use a, an electronic, no, an electrical content cleaner. You get the little tube, you, you, um, you spray it inside your, the flaps of the Joy-Cons, you give a little rub, and boom, it's fixed for now. And until like more dust um, 
pops up under the flaps and it just ruins the whole thing and you get to start over again. So yeah, Nintendo, fix this issue. <laughs> this will encourage players to play more and doing so comfortably. I want to play handheld without the fear of, of suffering from Joy-Con drift. Also, the new Joy-Cons will have magnetic attachments. I believe it's gonna be like a new, better way to connect the Joy-Con to the consoles instead of just sliding them via rail on the both sides. Me personally, sometimes sliding the Joy-Cons um, in the console doesn't at, doesn't at first connect to the console. I mean, I'll click it in and it won't show me that like, um, the clicking sound or like the visuals to let me know that it's connected and registered. I'll have to like slide up and down, up and down a few times. It, and in the end it works, but I, I want to like get it done in the first try. Like, but I'm pretty sure that's likely due to like age and durability. So if you like, if you like, if you're like, if you're like sli um, sliding in the console, sliding in the joy cons in the consoles, like more times you can count than it's probably worn out. Like, um, also for the um, for the Joy-Con straps, they're also magnetically attached. So there's no sliding in. Just you just click it in, and it's, and it's good. Um, also, um, for the for the new Joy-Con drip, uh, <laughs> for the new um, Joy-Con grip, it's gonna have a built-in microphone and headphone jack. So. Yeah, and also the pro controller is gonna have that too. I guess you're gonna have like a microphone here and a headphone jack here Just like just matching the other like um Consoles controllers like the PlayStation and Xbox I'm gonna be saying PlayStation and Xbox a lot because yes, they need to get ahead of the times um Yeah, what else they can add more new buttons like um, I had an idea to like add a capture button on the right Joy-Con because I like to capture buttons. I like to like, you know, take a picture or have some, have record gameplay on both controllers. Like if I'm playing like um, Nintendo Switch ports and I'm using the right Joy-Con, I want to take a picture or take a recording of my gameplay, but I can't do it because I'm using the right Joy-Con, not the left Joy-Con, because the left Joy-Con has the camera button. So yeah, um, it that, that it that doesn't hurt. Um, also, here's a good idea. What a button they could add is a scroll wheel, which um, just like your mouse, it makes it easy to scroll through menus and selections, especially long selections. Um, this idea comes from uh, Masahiro Sakurai, the creator of Smash Bros. I think he mentioned in one of his uh, YouTube videos that he wanted to like implement a scroll wheel. On one, on one of the controllers, but um, that idea never happened. But I would I would like to see it Im implemented in a controller one day, and um, yeah. I mean, what are you planning to do with the with the scroll wheel, Sakurai? A new Smash game? One can wonder. <laughs> um, you can also like um have the ability to rotate the scroll wheel, so you can like scroll through um vertically or. Yeah, either horizontally or vertically. Sounds genius, right? <laughs> like, um, imagine like playing Tears of the Kingdom. Um, you're you're drawing a bow and you're using the fuse uh, method, the fuse mechanic, fuse power. I I, I don't know. Um, and you have this long selection of uh, materials you want to fuse, but you have so many materials. So, um, if you if you're using the control stick, it takes a while, but if you're using the scroll wheel, you can select your material in no time flat. Faster than the control stick can. Yes! That's genius. Also, um, I hope they add adaptive triggers to the to the con to the controllers. Um especially for Splatoon, like having different feels from when you're using different weapons. That'd be cool, right? Okay, now I've gone to the now I've gone to the, the first three things: the specs, the joy, the backwards compatibility, and the Joy Cons. Now I'm moving on to part two: the user interface and the home menu. Like as for the user, as for the UI and the home menu, 
this needs <coughs> my voice. This needs to have a massive overhaul along with a few additions. Like if you see the current Switch UI, it looks bland and boring. It looks simple. I'm assuming it's simple because um since the Wii U failed, they want to like rush out getting the next console out, the NX, the Switch. So I guess they fo they just focus on the main points and not, you know, having some flair in their um home menu or their UI. So I guess they didn't have time for that. But for the Switch 2, I think they have a, I think they're gonna have a lot of time, you know, adding more flair and um color and taste and flavor into this in, into your home menu into your ui so yeah um they need a, they need some additions they need to add your a personal touch they need personality they need flavor like i said they need started with number four themes they need themes uh the Switch one had only two themes, basic black and, blaze, and basic white. That's it. That's it. No, nope. nothing came after that. Um, no updates, no nothing. Why Nintendo didn't add themes when they did before will forever puzzle me. I'm like, really? Um, so what can they do? Instead of, instead of just black and white, add more colors. Guys, name a color. Blue, red, green, yellow, orange, purple, pink. Did I say red? So many colors. Um <laughs> also, if you're not if you're not too much on colors, how about actual themes? Yeah, themes will function like how they did, like on the 3DS. We're gonna take what the 3DS had and we're gonna put it on the Switch 2. So, yeah. Each theme will have their, when you have a theme, they'll come with their own background music, their own wallpaper, icons and folders, and little tiny animations, just like, a, just like the 3DS. And if you're gonna be buying like these themes on the theme shop, these things are gonna cost like what, $5 a pop. That's a fair price, right? And how do you, and how do you get these themes? Um, you can purchase them regularly using your real money. Use your my, you can use my, my Nintendo points or some other kind of type of currency, you know? You can also earn certain themes through achievements. Achievements, huh? <laughs> Number five, achievements. I'm kind of shocked that Nintendo, with their many fun games, didn't implement an achievement system. I mean, there are valid reasons, like, um, there are some games that do have their own achievement system. You know, you, you do a certain goal or objective or level and then, you, and, and then you get an achievement and you get a prize or whatnot. But I think that we should, in a way, um, done in their own Nintendo way, of course, um, without, you know, forcing players how to play their, their own games. I mean, there should be, and, and of course, there, there should, of course, there should be an option to like, um, have an option to like not have it enabled. So if you don't like achievements, you can just turn it off, keep it off. That's fine. It's not, it's not for everybody, you know. Also, when you, when you, um, when they, when you add achievements, it can also add re replayability and it keeps players engaged. Like, I want to like, you ever like, play a game and you're like done everything that the game tells you to do or you're like i want to do more so why not add achievements now um sp speaking of achievements um there was a video that came out a while back um from a couple of um, ex um employees from nintendo um kit and krista they mentioned in their own video about um why nintendo or some higher up people were so adamant, they were so against the idea of, um, of achievements. And apparently they got blasted. They're like, one guy was like, hey, um, why don't we add achievements? Uh, Xbox did it, and I think it'd be better if uh, Nintendo did it too. And then some higher guy was like, are you in your freaking mind? So you think, so you think because Xbox did it, you want Nintendo to do it too? We don't want to force players 
how to play their games. Let them play their games. Shut up and sit down. You goofy. You know, like, <laughs> like, um, they just mentioned how this guy got eviscerated for speaking his mind. I mean, achievements aren't that a bad idea, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, moving on. Um, the achievement system will be similar to the Xbox and PlayStation, but it's going to be very different and unique. Like, take inspiration from, from the PlayStation and Xbox, but don't exactly copy it. Also, Nintendo did something kind of similar to, to that in the NSO for the, the Nintendo Switch Online, but um, it was so bare, like, oh, like, um, boot up the game and you get silver coins. And that's it. That, that's lame. That's lame. So it's going to be done like way bigger and better. I mean, and it doesn't, and it doesn't even have to be called achievements. Uh, they can call it something else. Badges, medals, or stars. With achievements, you complete certain objectives and challenges, and you earn achievements. Um, there, there's also daily and weekly um, challenges too. So yeah, um, I can see the daily and weekly challenges being like for games that like have more or uh, replayability, like um, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers. Um, yeah, cause yeah, it definitely like, fits that. Like it's an endless cycle of like racking up points. You can also show off up to um, three achievements on your profile for others, for others to see. So if you guys have played Splatoon 3, you can like put up to three of, of your badges on your profile and you, just to show off against other Splatoon characters, um, players. And what do you get for, a co for these achievements? You get rewards uh, such as, you know, for completion, such as um, themes, profile icons, points slash currency to use for whatever they, whatever they implement, how they implement it, um, and me costumes and clothing. Yes, I said me costumes. Yeah, me costumes, me clothing. Yes, stay with me here. Just stay with me. This might interest you. So number six. Mies. Let's talk about the Mies. Nintendo's very own avatars, which fun fact were planned since the Famicom era. I'll let you know. It's a little fun fact. Um, the Mies are underutilized in a way. Um, but I want to like implement some ideas to maximize their potential to the fullest. This might interest you. So these are gonna be like updated avatars. Like whatever you saw, however you saw your Mies last time, they're gonna look better on the Switch too. And they're gonna be used for your profile. Simple. Um, as for customization, it's gonna be similar to, to games such like Tomodachi Life, Mitomo, Mitopia, Smash Brothers, etc. So when you make your me, you go to the me maker. Um, you know you're putting on your face, your what your what hair you want, what eyes you want, mouth, nose, ears. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You're just customizing your face. And you just, you choose your own color for your color top. Um, I'm, a, I'm a red guy, so I choose red. And that's it, that's all, you, that's all you choose. I would like my me to look, you know, more customized. You know how like Xbox had their own avatars and they were like very dressy and flashy? They had like regular clothes that ha as we humans wear um, every day. Let's give them some clothing. Like give them like, um, let's give them a t-shirt. Let's give them like a long sleeve shirt. Let's give them like a jean jacket or something, something funny, you know? Yeah, also you can get clothing based on first party games, maybe third party games. Like um, you can dress up as Mario, um, dress up as Link, dress up as a Pokemon trainer. Like the list, cont the list goes on and on. And you can earn certain, um, and these can be earned through achievements as rewards or an in console store. Like, you know that currency, you know that um, in store currency I was talking about? Like, you know, currency, you know, from uh, getting achievements and uh, stuff like that. You can use those points to buy clothing or cosmetics for your me. Imagine what you want to put in, on your me, like a Mario hat, or you can give him like a, a master sword for his back, or like, um, I don't know. Like, Imagine, think about it. Also, 
If you have Amiibo, you can scan your Amiibo and you can unlock costumes based on, on said Amiibo. So let's see if you have like um, a Splatoon Amiibo, then you get their gear and you can put that on your me character. Like I want to give me's like their own, like a more customization option. That way you can like really show off your own me and you know, just flesh out that customization. Really show off your true self. And it sounds fun, really. It sounds really fun. All right, moving on. For number seven, I wanna bring back a fun feature from the 3DS that surprisingly people still use today. And that my friends is number seven, Street Pass. Street Pass was another great feature from the 3DS. And given that the Switch 2 is portable and can be taken anywhere, I think that Nintendo should bring it back for the next console. Like, yeah, it was such a missed opportunity for like Nintendo to not implement Street Pass on the Switch. But maybe it wouldn't work out. But maybe now some way or some idea to like implement Street Pass for when you're going on the go. So yes, this feature will work like the 3DS. When you pass other Switch owners with their with their consoles on them, even in sleep mode. Like if you're even play if you're even like playing like docked, even if, if the dock if the console on the dock is in sleep mode, it's still gonna connect. Uh you get that green light on your LED, like on your home on your home button. You know how it glows blue sometimes? It's gonna glow green when somebody passes you with Street Pass. And yes, uh when you do and when you do that in exchanges of uh, the player info, such as your me, your profile, your info, your stats, etc., etc., to other players. Also, if you're gonna bring back Street Pass, bring back play coins um, and a step counter. Like, um, if you guys, if you guys remember, there was a step counter and play coins for your 3DS. So when you walk with your 3DS, you increase the counter, and every time you get like 100 steps, or is it a thousand? I think it was 100. You get like um, 10 play coins and you can use those play coins for certain games just to help you in um, like co getting collectibles or getting help in game like um, like Kirby Trip of the Lux or um, Pokemon X. I think you guys know what play coins are. I, I think Do you guys use them. I don't know. And if they're going to be bringing back Street Pass, um, I think they should um, bring back um, Street Pass Me Plaza, along with their mini games and puzzles like Find Me. All right, moving on to number eight, a chat system. And I mean a good chat system. Like, how do we not have this? Like, really? Seriously, we're, we're missing so many things. Like, PlayStation and Xbox have this, have their own chat and party rooms. And the closest thing that Nintendo did was Picto Chat on the DS. <laughs> really? And Wii U Chat on the Wii U. I mean, come on, like what the fuck? Anyways, so yeah, similar to PlayStation and Xbox, and yes, Picto Chat, you can create a chat room for your friends. And the best part, it's not exclusive to the NSO phone app. Um, there's also an option for voice uh, chat even during gameplay, but only with your friends. That, that's why I mentioned uh, the new um, Joy-Con grip is gonna have like that built-in microphone and headphone jack. So you can talk to your friends, like um, either in the room or during gameplay while, while you're playing together or against each other. Also, yeah, and, and I hope that uh, the next Switch gets um, a new headset so you can like get started. And also a very important part, um, the safety between children and adults. So yeah, you want to like be careful. You want to be careful like who you uh, befriend in like um in your console because there are some creeps. There are predators, just looking for trouble, looking for kids. I I don't like that. So um so that's why parental control should be implemented with the chat system. So like it kind of like separates the kids and the adults unless they get the per they, unless they get their parents' gear say. So yeah, I think it's very important that like um to have a good chat system. There needs to be safety. And the parents need to be behind this with parental controls. Okay, number nine, Nintendo Switch Online. I'm 50-50 when it comes to the service 
but I know it can use some improvements. Obviously, improve the online functionality, meaning better servers that are dedicated to these games to avoid lag and misery to your gameplay. I want to see consistently added games from the retro libraries. The Nintendo 64 is a prime example. Like, where's Smash Brothers? That, 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 that's a very good game, but it's not in it. Who knows, maybe, maybe Nintendo's making a, a remake of Smash Brothers or a remaster. <laughs> I don't know. And yeah, like, what do you mean, like, consistently adding games? I don't want to, like, to drip, to drip beat us. Like, oh, here's one, here's one game every month. But I, I guess they're doing better at, the, at, at, at that adding thing, so. Also, like I mentioned from uh, the achievements, add daily and weekly challenges for retro games for, for the NSO. They're challenges, not achievements. But you can use these, um, but rewards for completing these challenges can be a way to like rack up points so you can use them to buy themes, me cosmetics, or profile icons. Once again, functions similar to achievements, but you're not, there's no achievements. Does that, does that make sense? I, I hope I did. Okay, and here's a big, and here's a big thing. This is something I wanted to see since, the, for a long time, since the Wii days. And that, my friends, are GameCube games. GameCube games for Nintendo Switch Online. Like, have you ever thought for some odd reason, like for some odd reason, the Wii U never brought, brought GameCube games to their virtual console li library. Like every console that was in the virtual console was there, except for GameCube. Why? Like I know, like I know we, like I know we had backwards compatibility for GameCube games, but there were no, but there were no like backwards compatibility. But but then again, if you if you kept your your GameCube disc in, in good condition, then of course you can play your your discs in. I would like like to see the option of you know buying the GameCube games digitally from the Wii from the eShop from the Wii days. And I'm I'm, I'm really surprised that there were no GameCube games on the Virtual Console for the Wii U too. That was a big missed opportunity. As for the reasons why, I, I don't know. Like, like why they exclude it? It's like, it's, it's a shame, like really. And I don't think they're gonna, and honestly, at this point, I don't think they're gonna bring it to this current Switch console. Like, I feel like it's too late and the Switch 2 is gonna come out at any time now. So like, it, it's too late. So just add GameCube game games to the Switch 2. Like, it's only a matter of time. Like, um, and yes, um, and what games could they add to the to the Switch uh, 2? By the way, like I'm gonna list I'm gonna list a whole bunch of games that like the Switch 2 can add for GameCube: Luigi's Mansion, Mario Kart Double Dash, Super Mario Sunshine, Kirby Air Ride, Super Smash Brothers Melee, F Zero GX, Star Fox Adventures, Star Fox Assault, Mario Party 4, 5, 6, Chibi Robo, Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon Gale of Darkness. Super Mario Strikers, Wario World, Chibi Robo, and if I'm feeling a little bit greedy, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, because I'm, I'm a Sonic fan. <laughs> yeah, so many games. I just listed like 10 plus games that they could add to the GameCube. Like, the GameCube has a great lineup of games. Like, even though the GameCube didn't sell that well, you can't deny that the GameCube the GameCube had a great library of games. Okay, now that I'm done with the GameCube, what about some, yeah, like again, like let's add missing games from previous consoles. Yeah, so like, um, I, I expect like, um, oh yeah, back to GameCube. I expect like, if they're gonna add GameCube to the NSO, I feel like they'll do it like within the first two years after the Switch 2 release. So like 2025 or 2026. Yeah, that's a good timeline, right? Time frame, right? Also, add Wii games. I expect to see Wii U games, Wii games added in the future. It makes sense since the Joy-Con can use motion controls and you can point in the screen, um, similar to Super Mario Galaxy. That, that's proof of that. One can expect the Wii games, if they have Wii games for the NSO, for, for the Switch 2. I'm gonna say 2026 to 2027. And what else? They can also add, I was gonna say they can add DS games, but I'm not sure how that would be implemented due to the lack of a second screen. I mean, um, the Wii U, they had 3DS games, but 
it worked. It worked because they had a second screen, your your Wii U gamepad, so you can use the gamepad as a touch screen and use your TV as the top screen. But um, we don't have that unless they have the technology. Like I'm not expecting them to like to like have like a secondary screen you can put on your Joy Cons, and then you can use that for the for the TV. I I don't know if you guys have. If you guys have any idea how they can implement DS games uh, to the Switch, let me know in the comments. I would like to know. Number 10, Nintendo Magic. Nintendo Magic? Really? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, hear me out, hear me out. I know, it may seem crazy, but we kind of need that for the next console. All right, think, think of this. Remember when the eShop from the 3DS and Wii U from the Wii days, especially the Wii days. That's an example of Nintendo Magic. Like, they had like, you know, music, just to, just to like accompany us, to accompany us when we like um, browse games that we might think of buying on the eShop. To me, that's magic. Like, they didn't need to add music to the eShop, but they did, and it just felt like a, a, a nice experience to have. But the current eShop, it's just, bare and silent also it's cluttered um like um interestingly um there was unused music hidden in some old files in a pre-release version in the os um for the switch um but it was probably scrapped probably to like um help the eShop boot up faster i don't know it's a shame also fix the eShop for god's sakes what else can they add um how about a boot how about a boot up jingle from when you, from when you're starting your console, like you know, you know, you remember how you like you boot up your your GameCube um or your Game Boy, the GameCube would go like <laughs> GameCube, and then you start your game. That <laughs> that is that is awesome. Like when I see that, like I I know I'm ready to play games, and the Game Boy, like when you turn on the Game Boy, you get the. Like, that's so cool. Like, I just like that extra flair before you start your own game, you know? Like, I want to see, I want to see the, the, the Switch 2 have, like, that boot up jingle. Uh, what else? Um, animation from when you're starting a game. Um, you selected your game on the Wii, and you had that little animation with the little music. Like, when you're playing Smash Bros, and your music... Your TV music, oh, your TV, <laughs> sorry, your TV volume is too loud. It goes like, oh, ching, ching. that gets me excited. That gets me excited. Um, and the 3DS, the 3DS has something like that. Like, um, you would like toggle your your game card, and it'll, it'll get, it'll have like a little like animation and a little mi a little music thing. And then that's it. So yeah, just just the little things that count, you know. Um. Also, um, before you like have like theme music, how about some goddamn music slash ambiance for your home screen? The Wii had that, the Wii U had that, but the Switch doesn't. Like once again, they just prioritize in like um making sure the 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 home screen the the UI would like work right. They didn't focus on making it flashy. Just they just want to like make they just want they just want to make sure it's there. So yeah, I want I want to hear music when I'm when I'm like. Browsing through my own home menu. This is my own idea. How about, how's it sound? Your own me interacts with the console owner. That's you. And with the home screen slash UI. Like, I want to see my, I, I want to see my uh, me, like in the home screen, just like, uh, you know, waving to me, saying hi, and, you know, picking the games and like making different animations, faces. I don't know. It's just, um, a fun and cute thing like Nintendo can add to their console. I like I like to I like to engage with my own avatar when I'm playing on my games, right? So that's something. Um, okay, and here's a crazy here's a one more crazy idea. What if the Switch Two dock had like a little mini screen in the front, and it shows and, and it shows off your like your me like doing whatever, and also shows off like um notifications such as like news events messages from other players like your friends like hey you want to come up like 
This guy texted me saying, "Hey, let's play Smash Bros." I can see that on that on the dock while my while my console was off. Like um, okay. Like this reminds me of like the net nav the net navvies from uh, Mega Man Battle Network. Like how they like interact with you, they talk to you and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a pipe dream, but can you imagine? Okay. And um here's some other honorable mentions that the next console needs, but I seriously doubt they're going to add it. They can add it, they can not add it. It can work, it can not work. So um let's just mention those honorable mentions. Um a play activity. Um it's going to be separate from the profile page and acts as the activity log for the 3DS Wii U and it has its own icon. Like um like when I go to my my own page on my, on my Switch, I can see like um my play activity. I can see how how many times I played Splatoon, Minecraft, except my Nintendo Switch Sports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I like how like the activity log did it in the 3DS and Wii and the Wii U. So have that instead of whatever this is for the Switch. For the Switch 2. An internet browser like the Wii U. I doubt they're going to add a browser. Um, probably due to hacking. Uh, Google, Google anyone? <laughs> um, they could find a solution like uh, finding a different browser. Opera GX. I don't know. Um, any suggestions? How about this? A standalone camera for reactions. Eh, like, like the Wii U. Um, yeah, that, that's not happening. That's not... <laughs> I got hiccups. Oh, sorry. That's not happening. Um, okay, how about this? A calendar for the home menu. So, like, um, you know what? It may sound minor, but I think it's a good idea. Like, if you have a calendar in your, like, um, home menu, it can track, it can track game events and, re and release dates for upcoming games. It sounds very useful. Like, um... Yeah, I, I would love to see a calendar that I can like, I can use to like track like certain game events like Splatfest or Smash Brothers, Smash Brothers events or Mario Kart tournaments, like examples, like that sounds like a cool idea on theory. Um, also fix the news app. Like when you're like, if you want to like change your region or your language, um, it kind of gets stuck in a certain language and, uh, okay. I want to like change my my news to Japanese, but I want I changed it back to English. But ever since then, I have English and Japanese news. So I just want to like have, but I want English only. But I can't fix that. So please, please Nintendo, fix that, fix that for me, please. How about a stylus for uh drawing? Yeah, for drawing and using for certain games like uh. I don't know, Art Academy, Swap Note, Kid Icarus. Nah. More multimedia apps, uh, like Netflix and uh, Disney Plus. I mean, come on. Having Disney Plus and Netflix on your, on your Switch too? The potential. But then again, you have your own TV and you have your own phone, so I'm like, why bother? Yeah, more use of the touchscreen. Like, um... Okay, now I know I said ten things, but I'm gonna there's a there's an eleventh thing. And that my friends are the launch games. What can the Switch 2 um launch within their within their first year? So what I think is gonna launch within the first year, what what could launch within the first year is like um a new Mario Kart. Um a new three Mario game. Hopefully 4K in open world. Um there have been talks about um, an Ocarina of Time remake, but in 4K. It's looking, it looks better than the, than the 64 and the 3DS game. A sequel to Switch Sports. Um, it could be a Switch Sports resort, uh, resort game. Um, Star Fox. We have not gotten a single Star Fox game um, since uh, Star Fox Zero, and we all know that sucks. But um, the only Star Fox content we had in... Um, for the Switch is Starlink, um, Battle for Atlas. It had Star, it had Star Fox, it had Star Fox characters in that game, but that's pretty much it. Star Fox didn't have like a remake or an actual game, so I'm expecting a Star Fox game in the first year. A new Kirby game, a 3D Donkey Kong game, because I don't, I doubt they're gonna do another country game. Um, 
Kid Icarus. I, I can only dream that they could add Kid Icarus to the Switch 2. Either being a remake or a whole new game, a sequel. Using the, the Switch 2 technology. And of course, some um, cross-gen games such as Metroid Prime 4 Beyond and Pokemon Legend ZA. Two games that are no, that are no doubt launching in 2025. And of course, some um, third-party games. Like uh, Monster Hunter Wilds and uh, Call of Duty. Maybe even Street Fighter. Now, I'm down to the final details. I expect uh, the Switch 2 to launch in two colors. I'm going to choose any two colors. Um, one is going to be gray. And the other one's going to be midnight purple. Gray is a very niche choice. Um, you know. You had black, you had white. Why not go in the middle? Go in the gray area. Get gray Joy-Cons and, and a gray console. And uh, Midnight Purple. Like, com like, you know how you have like, red and blue Joy-Cons? Instead of having red or blue, why don't, you just com why don't you just combine the colors and just make a Midnight Purple console? But then again, <laughs> but if people have to pick between gray and purple, I think they're going to choose gray. As for the price... Um, I think the price for the Switch 2 will be like, will be $500. $500 Canadian dollars. And uh, in the US, I, th I think it's going to be like 400 US dollars. Why? Because um, um, it's going to cost more than the Switch OLED. Um, so yeah, if I pull up from my screen, the Nintendo Switch costs $400 Canadian. Canadian. The Switch Lite costs $260, and the Switch OLED costs $450. So I'm expecting the Switch 2 to be more expensive than the OLED. So I'm going to go with $500. That's my final prediction for the pricing. And if the Switch 2 would, is going to have like an OLED um, model, uh, a Switch 2 Pro, I'm going to expect it to be like $550. But that's just thinking ahead and now for the name for the switch 2 so as for the official name for the switch accessor i think it should be called wait for it drum roll please the super nintendo switch Ta -da! yeah i thought of other runner-up names um such as the switch deluxe the Switch Exceed, the Switch Ultra, but nothing clicks more than the Super Nintendo Switch. And here are my reasons why the Super Nintendo Switch is a good name. One, the name is simple, not confusing. Two, it signifies the evolution, not a revolution shtick. Three, it kind of rolls out the tongue a little bit. Four, it's a small callback to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The SNES. Five. Uh, super is a good word to use to describe a more, a more better, more superior Switch. Also more powerful Switch. And it's also not a Wii U situation. So you won't get confused. When you hear Super, you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, as for calling it Switch 2, I want to, I want to call it the Switch 2 would click. Um, we called it the Switch 2 unofficially. We, we give it that fan name because it's the best placeholder name due to us believing that they're going to maintain the hybrid gimmick. So yeah, if the Switch is just like, if the Switch 2 is just like a regular Switch, but more better, more powerful, more superior, then it makes sense to call it the Switch 2. Switch to sequel, you know? Like, um, and one more thing. As for the release date, I expect this console to release sometime in the second quarter of 2025. So spring. So between April and June. Yeah, because they said like they're going to announce the console between now and the end of March. Their physical year. So after April, it's game for the console release any time within that time. After that time. So I think between April and June is when we'll finally get our hands on that sweet Switch 2 or Super Nintendo Switch. And that, my friends, is it. That is my 
my top 10 things slash features I want to see on the Switch 2. Uh, my thoughts, my ideas, my discussion, just laying it all out there. So what do you guys think of, so what do you guys think of my um, ideas, my features, my things? Uh, do you guys like it? Do you guys not like it? Do you guys agree? Do you guys not agree? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Also, tell me in the comments, what do you want to see for the next Switch console? Um, Naming-wise, what features do you want to see? Anything. What games do you want to see um, to launch with the new system? Let me know. So yeah, um, the Switch 2, man, it's going to launch. It's going to be revealed anytime soon, and I just can't wait. And there's already leaks coming out that I'm pretty sure they're, they're very true. So um, that's, that's going to be a fun um, five weeks. <laughs> so yeah, expect the reveal to be, if not this month, next month. So yeah, that's it. I'm done talking. Um, I've been talking for like an hour. So yeah, I'm done. So until next time, have yourself a good one and be good to each other. Till then, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. And I hope to God that whatever I say on my video, it materializes in real life. I really actually want these things on the next Switch. But I'm a dreamer. I'm an optimist. I'm an optimist.